gon' chew me, cut the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. Now let's go ahead and go into albums then, guys. Um, So, we're going to start with our mob reviews. We're going to discuss the score, who was on the mob reviews, and if we're still um, listening or not. And then we have some non- um my reviews what happened to rich homie kwan rich homie kwan passed away mm -hmm. um earlier september unfortunately so let's go ahead and get into these albums i don't think i put up the same <laughs> either but let's start with our mob reviews so katie perry's 143 me and king were on this mob review we gave it a 59 percent which is average on our scale, I gave it a 52%. King gave it a 65%. King, are you still mm. listening? I, I listen to I'm Here Season Mine sometimes. I listen to Lifetimes and that might be it. That might be all Katie get out of me. I, if I was to go back to this album, it's I'm Here He's Mine. But, yeah, see, over, but overall, as a whole, a lot of these songs I felt like could have been like the shit. Like if this dropped in like 2013, 2014. Ooh, uh oh. <laughs> and it was it was just the way that some it was just the way that some of them are, are shaped and the what what it reminded me of and like where I felt like you know how where music takes you places. Yeah. So when I was listening right, right. to some of when I was listening to some of these songs, I felt transported back into like high school. It was like the songs that were coming out, coming out around that time. And I was like, these songs would fit in that realm mm -hmm. of music that, you know, for the Mississippi folks that was playing on Y101 and stuff like that. And I don't, and that did play a part into my writing. But the other thing is that some of these songs is just, <laughs> I was listening to it and I wasn't mad at it, but this just didn't feel like an outstanding piece of work for me. Mm -mm, it didn't. Another song I enjoyed was Artificial with um, J.I.D. With Artificial had like me that. until she did that robot shit at the end. And I was like, see, that pisses me off. <laughs> Artificial. What the fuck? She did. <laughs> yeah. We ride at Harley's in Hawaii. I, that's I what that's my song. That's what, album. I, that's what got in the chat. I wanted she said more you Harley's in Hawaii. Ay, ay, ay. Harley's in Hawaii was nice, though. I just. No, hold on. Wait, y'all. Have y'all seen the video of Katy Perry singing that song in that bathroom live? And she was trying to hit that note. Mm -mm. <laughs> she must have told we'll, it we'll, off. We'll, we'll talk about it offline. We'll talk about it offline. <laughs> Show me offline. <laughs> but I definitely agree. I was. I'm, I would say that Katy Perry kind of lowered my expectations for this album when the first single for this album was Woman's World. She, she confident. <laughs> she, she confident. And, and then <laughs> there she came out with Lifetimes and Lifetimes wasn't bad, but I still wasn't like, oh, this album is going to be like, I'm looking forward to this album. But it did. Woman's World did like Upset me, especially with that being the opener for the album. I was like, yeah. Katie, you could have put this at the bottom of the album. I wouldn't have been mad at you if you put Woman's World at the bottom to start off this album with Woman's yeah. World. With sexy confidence. She wanted y'all to know. It, I feel it like was, for what she was trying to go for, the whole vibe of it, probably in her head, like this, this is gonna this is gonna get them. This the one. Mm -hmm. This the one I can see <laughs> the vibe, like the three. whole woman's world. This is Katie's back. What's her name? Catherine Hudson. Catherine Hudson's back. I just, <laughs> and, I just feel like, and it just didn't deliver. Honestly, unfortunately, honestly, y'all quit laughing at Katie for real. Y'all know she's a legend, an icon. No, she she, she is, is, which is she why is. is which is why I was expecting more from this project. I was, I was. That her legacy is exactly why I was expecting more from this project because Lady Gaga said yeah. she was coming back. Then Katy Perry was talking about she was doing the album. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, Katy Perry and Lady Gaga coming back? Mm -hmm. We're gonna get the 2010s again. Oh, and and then we got there, and I was just like, okay. 
Yeah, they, oh. they arrived at this. Gaga. I feel we like put her on here. So I started listening to Harlequin, which is Lady. I saw in um she did an interview for this. She's basically calling that album Lady Gaga album six point five. So the next album is she said it's going to be a pop album, Lady Gaga pop album. This oh, album uh-huh. specifically Harlequin Harlequin was for the Joker album. And when I started listening to it, it has that very like show tuny vibe, which I guess is the vibe that you're going for in the songs in the Joker. And I at the time that I was listening to the album, I was not in the mindset to listen to that right now. Mm. So we got a question about Katy Perry's album. Do you think because her songs are like teens and 20s music that her getting older, the music is not fitting her anymore? I mean, I could see that because, I mean, the times are changing. So, you know, what we used to like, kids, I don't like all that no more. Well, I ain't going to say not none of them, but, you know, times do change. So. If I had to compare, like, what the like what the new pop is, because you have people like Sabrina Carpenter. Um, if I had to compare Short and Sweet to Katy Perry, which is, like, two different generations of, like, pop music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That could be. That could be what's going on. That the expectation for pop music is a bit different. Different. Mm-hmm. That when we think pop music, now we're thinking Sabrina Carpenter, Tate McRae is coming out onto the scene. You got Olivia Rodriguez. You got this girl that be crying. You got um. You got Renee Rapp, mm-hmm. and then Billie our Eilish. Pop, Billie Eilish, and then. You know, we go our when we were younger and coming up, our pop icons were Lady Catherine Gaga, <laughs> Katy Perry, oh, Kesha, and yeah. right, uh, Brittany, yeah, Brittany. um, Sean Paul. So, I don't, I don't know who she was trying to appeal to to these songs, but they just didn't give me Dark Horse, ET, Teenage yeah, Dream, yeah, Catherine, Catherine, Catherine TG, Catherine. Last Friday Night. Catherine Captain. Yeah, Lipa. Yeah. She, one thing I do is she gonna twist that hip. One thing she, I she, do. They said she dance now. They said she do full routines. Now. Man, I I, I I watch Zach Campbell. Shout out to you, Zach. If you come stop by the channel, I watched one of his videos with Zach on his channel, and she do. She was doing the some some. She was, you know, was clapping. One, two. Not <laughs> clapping. No. <laughs> but they did. Now, I, I seen clapping. a TikTok. I seen a TikTok. They put up. Recent performance about what she was doing that. Yeah, the little, I remember I that. saw that. It was so funny. That was hilarious. My girl, <laughs> she, um, they had so many memes on that. Oh I'm my like, god! All I'm sorry about Tua is, um, you know what I mean? Ain't that her song? I, blah, blah, blah. I, I like Dua like, Lipa. Blah, 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 blah. Physical, blah, blah, blah. um, Houdini. That new album that she dropped a couple months ago. I like that album. I'm gonna have to get into to uh. I might have to get into some new pop girl. It's the only new pop girl that I just really been into for real is Sabrina. I just now it's gonna be Tate since she's Tate and caught my attention. So let's see how long she's gonna hold it. Yeah, I hope she can. I really hope Tate McRae continues and, with that. Yeah, vibe. stick the landing, please. But what I was gonna say, I feel like I may have had a would have had a different perception of Katy Perry's album if she chose a new single to start this off. Because imagine if she started the rollout with the Dochi song. Yeah, that would have ate. But how long has she done that? You would have been pissed off because you listened listen to the rest of the songs. Like, girl, what the fuck is this? Uh, uh, yeah, you would have been uh, pissed off. You would have went into a so high. You got to change your confidence and been so mad. But I mean, I didn't have any expectations at all. She started with <laughs> Women's World. <laughs> and Catherine, let me just tell you this. When the deluxe comes, I heard you making a deluxe after you tour overseas. I noticed she didn't drop no two days for the U.S. She must not be touring around the U.S. She said, yeah, I, I saw that too. For real. When you drop a deluxe, or that's what they say. Listen, Captain. Don't drop a deluxe. It's all right. We don't even want it. Go on tour. It, it, was, it, was, the fact, it was the fact that she announced <laughs> the deluxe immediately after the album came out. And I, was I like, and I was like, damn, you must knew this one. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I think they said I looked at the here it goes they said Katy Perry's album first week sales she only did forty eight k yeah for a legend legendary 
Because the because what they're comparing it to, and that's our next mob review that I want to get into. They compared it to mixtape Pluto, which debuted with one twenty nine k. Not they comparing K to, but I, I think because they came out at the same time. I think like yeah. one four three came out like a week before. Oh, Pluto. okay. They came out around the same time. Right. So that that was the comparison, the dates, not the genres, not the. I was gonna say well, <laughs> <laughs> not but, featuring Catherine. But to step oh, into that, so our <laughs> second mob review is <laughs> the mixtape Pluto. Me and Ron was on this mob review. Ron's not here today, so he won't be able to speak on his piece. But we gave the album overall a seventy-seven percent, which is solid on our scale. I gave it a seventy-five percent, and Ron gave it a eighty percent. Now, I enjoyed this album a bit more than I did his first two projects of this year. This gave very, we back in college, we finna go to them kickbacks, I'm finna hang out with my, my frat bros, and we just finna chill and listen to this future album. And I, and I really enjoyed this. I'm and, happy to listen to it. And, uh, and and it debuted at number one on the charts. And I just have to think, is Future doing his big one this year? Because all, all three of his albums charted at number one. Mm-hmm. Is he doing his big one this year? He, he's in his bag. <laughs> he is in his bag this year. I, no, I, we don't, I, I, we don't I, I, trust I, I, you. We still don't trust you in mixed up. I'm just out the loop when it comes to Future. I, just, I ain't heard a Future song yet. That just really caught you, and I feel it. But he, it just but really he made is, say, Let me go check the future. Now, I'll but see he, y'all post, you know, the screenshots so y'all listen to the new future album. But I was, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. He is. He, I, 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 I think try, the things I that he's dropped have been different enough, you know, to catch different audiences. The because future has been around for a long time, mm-hmm. and he has like different styles that he's done. Like this is, you would say, this is more the old school type future. I think mm-hmm. some of the other ones that he did earlier this year are a bit of the more of the new school type of future, but he's so he's been in his bag in terms of he's given us some of all of future. So if you if you like future, then you you should catch on to at least one of the projects that he's released. Should he hang it up? I mean, I wouldn't if I was if if he was to, if he was to bow <laughs> if, after giving me mixtape Pluto, if he was to bow out, I wouldn't even be mad. Yeah, but if I was still doing numbers, I I went. I I, I don't up. I don't think Future's gonna stop making music. His no, this, not. mixtape mm-hmm. Pluto just made one hundred twenty nine k. He's not gonna stop making music. But yeah, I not. but I will say I really enjoyed mixtape Pluto. I did. Yeah, his beats are nice. I don't know. It's just something with me and so I used to be. In, she said, I listen I to that on mute. <laughs> <laughs> she take the words out. She go on YouTube. She go on YouTube. Future we still don't trust you, instrumental <laughs> version. <laughs> I don't know what it is about me, but I don't know the male rappers lately. Today, I just have been in tune with the male rappers lately. I don't know. They don't be talking about. I guess they can say the same thing about female rappers. But to me, like I've been trying to, because I used to be heavy with the male rappers, like Kevin Gates, now Rich Homie Quan when he first came on the scene, Migos. Um, yeah. All them good people. Um, what's the boy name? The... Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it's just the male rappers these days. They just I, I they would... used to be a little lackluster like, to me. Like, I would admit that I haven't been keeping up with them with the with the the upcoming male yeah. rappers. I haven't been keeping up with all like, of them. I just... But I like some of them that are my radar. Like I like Jid. Um Yeah, I like Jid. J I D, he nice. Uh, black, even though he's been around for a while, like I got into him like in college or whatever, but I still keep up with him. Uh, I would say, I would say, I would say, uh, NLE, Ghana, and Future are probably the oh, yeah, I like Ghana too. I listen to one on one, are the rappers that put NLE as number one on the top worst 50 worst rappers list. He was number one, he was on that. I was like, oh. And he was yeah. upset, but <laughs> but what I was gonna say was they leaked the freshman XL XXL list for this year. And I, looked at the and list, I ain't know nobody. Like, I knew oh, nobody. Oh. I said I was gonna tweet auntie. I mean, baby, explain to auntie who these people are. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I saw so, my girl. You talking about that? Was on there. You talking yeah, about that? Was on there. 
Yeah, the French. Uh, yeah, people. I saw. I saw. Didn't know all them, a lot of them people. I was. Like, I saw oh. Lay Banks name, and I'd be like, "Oh, I know that, that one." That was it. Yeah, <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> What's she well, they repping it. I guess that's why they on the list, though. I, I call Future and Drake the song ruiners when he hops on a song and the song ends up trash. When he did the oh. Black Panther song with Kendrick, my smile went away. Oh. 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 You know? oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will say, I have not, because I listened to the Black Panther album in full, that first one, because the second one is a bit more like afro beady. That first one. I have not went back to that future song. It's all the stars and pray for me if I ever listen to that. Pretty like, much, I like that's, that's, and I, now I think about that's it, what that's what like, she that's what that's the song she's talking about. Yeah, I didn't like future part on that song. La di da di da, la di da di da. Yeah, they could have kept that out. I like, but that boy's so funny too, yo. But she said, she said my smile went away. I feel like I feel like everybody's smile went away when he came on the bed. Yeah, that was a nice. That was so funny though. Kendrick was doing his thing since Future got on there and played. I feel like everybody's smile dropped when he came on. It was all. <laughs> Why did they let him do stuff like that? <laughs> me off. If I was Kendrick, that would have legit pissed me off. But they chose that. They they could have re-recorded it. Everybody <laughs> made a, everybody made a choice to keep that yeah, on their track. And I would have sent that shit. to me and I'd have sent that right back. Let's try. Again. <laughs> you don't got nothing else. Yeah. You ain't got nothing else now. Yeah, we like, yeah damn. we got. Yeah, we got your verse. Is this the right recording? Is this the right recording? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Because that's Pluto. But, um, oh, goodness. So the non-mob reviews that we have, that we didn't make it to, we might do mob reviews in the future, but we haven't made it there yet. Leon Thomas, and for those who need a bit of reference, Andre from Victorious released an album called Mutt. And then Tommy Richmond. The artist behind Million Dollar Baby dropped the album called Coyote. Now, Coyote, just, cut that off. Right. I cut, cut that off. <laughs> I didn't like it. I like the beats, but then he gets on the song. It's the same thing what it's going on in the comments. He gets the, the instrumentals are nice. He gets the doing his thing, and I'll be like, see, I can't. Because what are you talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to say, though, Leon Thomas, I put on that album I don't know what I was thinking going into this album. He must have said something. I was like, oh, so we're not in Hollywood Arts anymore. You said right. we're not what? In Hollywood Arts anymore. No, we're and not at Hollywood Arts anymore. I said, let me go back. <laughs> that, man is, that man is singing yeah. on that album. That answer the phone track? I was I like, think, oh, he's, he's singing. Let me go to because I think the songs that I enjoyed on that album was, I know I enjoyed the, of course, the title track, but. I'm a yeah. dog, I'm a mud. I enjoyed that. I also enjoy let me go see. Leah. I like how fast Lucy I Dreams yeah. from Masego, Feelings on Silent with Wale, Answer Your Phone, and then Mud is what I added to I my actually, playlist. I uh, actually enjoy listening to this album for real. I ain't gonna care. I didn't know what to expect going into this, but I enjoyed it. That yeah, I like playing game. Yeah, how fast was nice. I think I like Safe Place. I like the song with Wale was nice. I Farfetch with Tal Dollar Sign, Mud. Yeah. I would have, I would have to go back and listen to it, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. That was he a good was album. Grown. He was nasty. Yeah. He was, he was on that grown. It was like listening posi to positions with Ariana, but this Andre now. <laughs> yeah, let, I was like, we, we are let, not at Hollywood Arts. We, no let, we let Kat Valentine do her thing. Now it's yeah. Andre's turn. Yeah, I was like, ooh, he grown, y'all. That's a man. But that that was a good album. I was like, this yeah. that good R and B. This that singing in the mm -hmm. rain R and B. In the video on your knees, hung on her legs because you don't want her to walk out the door R and B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but that Tommy Richmond album, sometimes I didn't even, go I'm not even go I didn't even bother trying to click on it to be honest. Cause... I I heard on social media they were saying it was ass, but I was like, you know, let me go listen to it for myself. I got in the first couple songs, real nice beats, lovely beats, and then he lovely gets on there, beautiful gowns, and then he gets on there, and then it just ruins the experience for me. Mm. And then, like, and, like high spice. and then Million Dollar Baby, the song that got ain't even there, on there, ain't even the, on the album. Oh, it's not on there. 
at all. The other one. The he other gonna, one he gonna try to put either. it on the deluxe. He gonna put them on the deluxe watch. I won't. Be the other song that um that was big on on TikTok, "Devil Is what Alive." Song? Yeah, it's called "Devil Is Alive." It's not he, on he, he dropped that one right after "Million Dollar Baby." Mm-hmm. That's they had a whole dance on TikTok that. for that too. So he was really just out here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna just drop some. This is why we you should have stuck to the stuff you know. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he did because if you really listen to what he's saying in Million Dollar Baby, he's not saying not shit. Yeah, I every the, the beat is real nice. The, the beat on Million Dollar Baby is nice and it's catchy. Oh, but what is that man saying on that song? <laughs> 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 I don't I, uh, to address the comment about him being a one hit wonder. I'm gonna still like, I'm gonna still give him room to drop something else because, like I said, he got million dollar baby and double is alive with being on. TikTok I just feel like I just feel like I just feel like ain't nobody gonna be on his head hard enough for him to change yeah. his music. Not nobody care enough. Yeah, it's All gonna right. have to go big on TikTok. Again and then ain't nobody gonna change. He got that one song to get everybody anticipate another album out there. It's not but nobody what? really know him for real to be dropping an album because that and people not rapping no more. Like I just really hate they not rapping, they not putting their effort in. They get a five beat from they either go to London on the track or the one that you work with Megan or ain't that Ryan Juju? or somebody Juju. And get a fast, fast beat, and get on these tracks and play. And play. They get in these studio and play, and it pisses me off so bad. And I hate when people tell me, "Oh, I'm not. I don't listen to lyrics. I listen to songs." And what do you listen to? The beat. I, I feel. I feel like that mind. I feel like that mindset is. I won't say it's ruining, but it's hurting. It's hurting music culture. Music. Because y'all just we we can't just listen to beats all day. We can't. We, we, can't just, we just say, can't bro. listen to beats all day. What happened to listening to lyrics, listening to so much? Y'all running that bit backwards talking about this demonic messages. Y'all cut up yeah. when Beyonce <laughs> drops. <laughs> Y'all cut up when Beyonce drops sweet dreams. Ain't no like demonic this. music that's, no more. That's, that's the problem. When we was, that's when we was listening to lyrics. Demonic music. Well, y'all stop. Me personally, I can't enjoy a song fully if I don't listen to the lyrics. Like, now, so I, it, it happens like, so, in steps now. The beat is what catches me. But once I tune yeah, in yeah. what you're saying that. to me and you're not saying nothing to me, it's done. next. You're it's done. next. It's yeah. real. Child. You know how many fast beats Ice Spice got on that motherfucking album? A lot. Nice and, you, and you know how many songs she's actually saying something on Substance on? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> right. She gets and no plays out of me. That happens to me while I'm driving. Like when I'm doing something and I'm listening to music, I can zone out a little bit. And but when I'm driving... Song. And I just really have focus on like, what are you talking about? Like, I <laughs> some of them, like, what are you talking? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, I thought I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on now. Because I'm telling y'all, after we can drop, come December, January, we get you no know, official. We get the Eternal Sunshine official deluxe album. Watch this. Watch what I tell you. This slightly yeah. deluxe shit. Y'all not paying attention. Y'all not reading between the lines. We gonna get the official.